Hi everyone, this is the lesser known math and in today's video I will show you something very surprising as always. There is a single divisibility test for each of these numbers you see here on the board. 3, 7, 9, 11, 13 and so forth. And that's really surprising, at least for me, uh, when I heard this for the first time I was amazed. Because of course we all know some trivial tests for divisibility by 3 or by 9. Some of us know a test for divisibility by 7, 11 and 13. But this one I will show you in a minute works for each of these numbers in pretty much the same way. Let's first see some examples and then I will explain why this weird thing works. So we're gonna look at three examples in total. You see them on the board. And as you can notice, for each of these numbers, 7, 11, 13, that we will test for divisibility, we have certain magical constant. So for instance, for the number seven, the magical constant is negative two. Imagine we want to test whether seven divides this number over here, 24,598. So what we do is take the number without its last digit and subtract twice this digit. So we shall subtract 16 to get 2443. And then we continue the same way. We, we take the same number without the last digit and we subtract two times the, this last digit. So then we take 244 and subtract 6 to get 238 and one more time if we subtract 2 times 8 from 23 we get 7 so the rule is that this number is divisible by 7 if and only if each of these numbers we got on the road including 7, is divisible by 7. So apparently 7 is divisible by 7 and then this number at the top is also divisible by 7. Okay, how about divisibility by 11? Well, in the same way, but now the magical constant is negative 1. So let's see how we will proceed if we want to test this number for divisibility by 11. Again, we take the number without its last digit and in this case we will just subtract this last digit. So I should subtract 7 and I get 352. Now one more time uh, I should take 35 and subtract 2 and I get 33. So obviously 33 divisible by 11 which means that my initial number is also divisible by 11. One last example, this time with 13, the magical constant is plus 4 here. So if we want to see whether this 4-digit number is divisible by 13, we should add 4 times the last digit to the prefix again. So um, after the first step, we will get this 828 plus 12, right? So we get 840. And then applying the same rule one more time, we'll take 84 and add 0 times 4, so nothing will change. And then now we can already see that 13 does not divide 84, so um, our initial number won't be divisible by 13. But if we want to be sure, we can apply the rule one more time. If we take 8 and add 4 times 4, you will get 24 and 24 is not divisible by 13. So that's it. We can test divisibility in this unified way, but let's see why this weird peculiar rule works at all. Okay, so first let's figure out where are these magical constants coming from. So you see them again over here. For 7, the constant was negative 2 and we have 7 times 3 equals 20 plus 1. For 9, the constant was plus 1. We have 9 times 1 equals 10 minus 1. So basically, here that 2 comes from here, and this 1 comes from this digit. Similarly, for 11, we have 10 plus 1. So again, we have 1 
And you see the signs over here are the opposites of the signs over there. So to obtain the magical constant for some of these numbers, I need to look for the smallest multiple of this number that is almost a multiple of 10. For instance, for 23, I have 23 times 3 equals 69, which is 70 minus 1. So this is indeed the smallest multiple of 23 that is that close to a multiple of 10. And again, this implies that my magical constant for 23 would be 7 with a plus here because I have a minus there. Okay, so now we are ready to explain why the trick works. So um, let's say that we want to test whether a number p divides some other number n. So again, p is not necessarily a prime number, it's just a number relatively prime with 10. And let's say we found the least multiple of our number p, that is a multiple of 10 plus or minus 1. So let's say that, for instance, p times j is 10k minus 1. If we have plus 1, the situation is very similar. So let's say the digits of my number n are given here, as, as minus 1, and so forth, up to a0. This means that basically n is given by this summation, as times 10 to power s, plus as minus 1, 10 to s minus 1, and so forth. And now it comes the important step. So it's crucial that we can add and subtract a0 times 10k. How this is going to help? Well, let's see. Okay, so if we pair up this last term, minus a0, 10k, and, and this term, a0, we get this one, minus a0, 10k minus 1. But 10k minus 1, we know something about this, right? We know that it's a multiple of p. Okay, so this part is divisible by p. As long as that part is divisible by p, then the whole number n will be divisible by p. And vice versa, if this is not divisible by p, then uh, n is not divisible by p. Okay, but what do we have here? Well, exactly what we do in the test, right? We take the number n without its last digit, and then we add this last digit times k, right? So, yeah, this is simply where it comes from.